Wiper motor failure on this generation car is somewhat common and it's a huge, huge safety concern. On our Mark V GTI, this is sort of an intermittent failure where the longer you run the motor, the slower it goes till eventually it stops working. If you want a more in-depth explanation on exactly how these motors typically fail, I've done a video on it. I'll put a link down in the description and you can check that out. But the short answer is it gets water in it. In a perfect world, we would follow the repair manual to the letter and deactivate alternating park position. What this feature does is it changes the resting position of the wipers, and this helps to extend the life of your wiper blade. But it's not a perfect world, and if everything worked okay, you wouldn't be replacing the wiper motor anyway. So I'm gonna show you how to do it without having to do all that extra stuff and still get it perfect. Another thing that I generally do is mark the current position of the wipers, but in our case, they're very poorly adjusted, so we can't use that either. One final tip as we're going through this job and testing our work, the wipers won't work with the hood up, so you need to either have the hood closed or go ahead and latch the hood in order to test the wipers. Our first step is going to be removing both wiper arms. Pry the little trim caps off. This can be done with either a pocket screwdriver or a small pick. That's going to expose the 13 millimeter nut that holds the wiper arm to the wiper transmission. There is actually a special tool that you can use to remove the wiper arm. If you have that, be sure and use it. It works great. If you don't, here's a way around it. Start by loosening the 13 millimeter nut I really like to use an impact tool here. I've seen a lot of these break by using hand tools. Now you don't wanna remove it, only loosen it. And same thing for the passenger side. Spray some penetrating oil or silicone spray on the threads and under the nut. Gently press up and down right near the hinged part of the arm. I say gently because you wanna start that way and then work your way up to putting more pressure, but you need to be very careful. Too much pressure, you'll break the cowl trim or in the worst case scenario, you'll break the windshield. As you press down with the palm of your hand, you'll see that the arm gets loose. Now we can remove the nut and take off our wiper arm. I like to push down on the spring tension portion and continue to rock it back and forth as I remove the arm. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the passenger side. Next, we need to remove this seal along the cowl trim. This simply just pulls forward. Next, we need to remove the cowl trim that runs along the bottom of the windshield. We need to be incredibly careful here not only is it very easy to break the cowl trim, and you can see ours is already broken, but it's kind of easy to break the windshield. And I always like to use plastic trim removal tools here, not a screwdriver. If your cowl trim already has a section starting to come up like this, start there and work your way out. Since it's already popped up, that'll be a really easy way to do it. If you don't have anywhere that's popped up and your cowl trim's installed correctly, I like to start on one of the far sides, either the driver or the passenger side. Oftentimes you can simply lift up from the bottom and push it from underneath and that'll pop it loose. Also gently rocking it back and forth does help. If that doesn't work, try and pull the cowl trim away a little bit. Take your plastic trim wedge and get it between the cowl and the windshield and very gently ease up on it. Once you get a little bit of the trim away from the windshield, simply slide your plastic trim tool all the way across. Once the trim is loose from the windshield, we can go ahead and remove it. While you have the cowl trim off, it's a great time to get all this nasty stuff out from behind it. This is a really common place for leaves and other debris to build up, or you might get lucky and find some critters. The next step is taking loose this portion of the bulkhead. It's held in with two 10 millimeter fasteners, one on the driver's side right near the wiper motor. The other one is roughly in the same spot on the passenger side right behind the hood strut. We're gonna need to lift it up and over the stud on the driver's side, and we don't actually have to take it all the way out. Just pull it away from the car enough to get the wiper motor out. Once that's out of the way, we can get the wiper motor and transmission out of the car. Once we have the transmission assembly out of the car, we need to separate this portion of the arm right here. If you want to, before separating the arm from the bracket, we can throw a little mark on it. That'll help us line it up a little bit. You don't have to do that, but that may aid in going back together. Next, we have to separate this arm from this bracket that's held in with a ball and cup. So we'll take our screwdriver and you don't wanna pry necessarily. What's easier is to twist 
and I'm going to twist counterclockwise so the pressure is applied a little bit closer to the ball. Next, we need to remove this bracket right here off of the motor. If you don't have an impact to remove this, grab a pair of pliers and hold it because as you twist it, it's just going to move with the motor. Take our screwdriver, work our bracket off. Notice that it's almost parallel with the rest of the transmission. When we go back together with it, we're going to try and start with it that way. Not a bad idea to clean this up either. Next, we'll remove the T30s, holding the motor to the transmission. And now we can go ahead and remove our motor. All right, now that we have the old motor off, we have the new motor right here. This one came with these screws installed, and that's actually the first time I've ever seen that. Typically, they don't have the screws installed, but the kit does come with new screws, and the holes for the screws are not usually tapped. So these are actually self-tapping screws. You can use these to tap the new holes when you install the motor. We're gonna go ahead and remove these three T30s. This one also came with a little tube of grease that we're going to use. Put some lube, some grease down here. Next, we'll put our little grease boot that came in our kit. Get rid of our old motor. Now you'll notice on the transmission, there's a groove here and two grooves here. That's where this motor rides. May actually be easier to remove the dust boot, put the motor on first, then go ahead and put our dust boot back on. Take our bracket, start our T30s. Now for the torque of these three T30s, I got some conflicting reports. I saw eight newton meters in some places, nine in others. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this one to nine newton meters. Once we have our motor bolted up to our transmission, we'll need to put the two in proper orientation. This very well might be the trickiest part of the entire job. And it's one of the most important ones. If we get the motor and this bracket clocked wrong, the wipers may only go halfway up and try and go down past the cowl or function backwards or in some way, shape, or form not work correctly. Over the years, I've found some discrepancies in the repair manual vehicle to vehicle. In fact, for the GTI, the wiper transmission they show is completely different from this one. So we're gonna use a baseline setup and then take it to the car and test it before we install it all the way. What we're looking for is the distance between the arm on the wiper motor and the bracket of the transmission. This gap needs to be about three millimeters plus or minus one millimeter. So we're looking at roughly a gap like this. You can see this little blue line right here on my trim tool. That's about three millimeters. We'll put it about there. Actually go ahead and leave that in there. Snug our bolt down. Torque that to 17 newton meters. Next we need to put our connection arm on. I usually put a little bit of dielectric grease on this ball and on the cup. And if you're super strong, you can do that by hand. If you're not strong like I'm not, use a pair of pliers, apply even downward pressure, and snap it in. Now that our wiper motor is built, it's time to install it. Pull the plug out so it's out of the way. Then we'll go ahead and install our wiper motor. Now you may have to do some wiggling to get it to install properly. Just make sure that nothing is bound up. Go ahead and tighten it down. Then we'll plug our motor in. Next, we need to put our firewall or our bulkhead trim back on. Make sure that your seal is installed all the way. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull the wiring harness back a bit and slip it right into place. The 10 millimeter bolt goes on the passenger side and we'll tighten down the nut on the driver's side. Next, we will tuck our wiring harness back in. Time to get the cowl trim put back on. This channel right here is where our cowl trim actually sits and clips into. We really need to clean that channel out. You can use something like a pocket screwdriver if you're careful. You wanna get any of that dirt out of there, otherwise your cowl trim may not sit down all the way. I like to take the cowl trim, make sure it's clean as well and just spray it with some glass cleaner right where the lip is that goes into that seal we just cleaned. That'll allow this to snap in quite a bit easier. You wanna be careful with the cowl trim here too. Remember it's plastic and remember you're putting it into glass so you don't wanna run into any issues with breaking plastic or breaking glass. Once it's set into place, all I like to do is I like to just move my hand down it and snap it all the way in. You shouldn't have to push very hard. In fact, if you're having to really smash on it to get it installed, you might wanna take it back out and make sure you got all the debris out of that little channel. All right, we got a couple new wiper arms. The other wiper arms were a little bit boogered up, so we're gonna put some new ones on. A tip on part numbers. 
the last digit of the part number dictates what side of the car the part goes on. So odd numbers, 409, odd number is a driver's side. Quick way I remember that is VW drivers for the driver's side are odd for the part number. So this is gonna be our driver's side. You also know the driver's side on the Mark Vs because it has the long section between the mounting point and the pivot point where the spring attaches. Before you put this on the car, you gotta get the wiper on. That'll reduce the risk of breaking the windshield. Also, the driver's wiper blade is the longer of the two. Next, go ahead and set the wiper on the transmission piece, and then we're gonna make the measurement from the cowl trim to the wiper blade. At the tip of the wiper blade, you want it to be 10 millimeters, plus or minus five millimeters for your adjustment. So the target is 10, but you can go anywhere from five to 15 millimeters on this gap. We're gonna do the same thing for the passenger side. Now the gap on the end of the passenger side wiper blade is gonna be right about 17 and a half millimeters. The torque spec on these bolts is going to be 20 Newton meters. Go ahead and torque those down, then put the little decorative caps back on, put our hood seal back on. I like to test my wipers with the hood up if you want to do that, you got to do one thing. You got to latch the hood latch because the wipers won't work with the hood up. I like to take just a bent pick, go under the spring and latch the hood. Sometimes I'll even leave the tool in there so that I don't close the hood on the latch. This is one of those cases where having a dirty windshield isn't horrible because you can see the witness marks from the wiper. Beforehand, we had that wiper hitting the A pillar and it actually damaged the trim up at the top. This is a much better alignment. Before we wrap it up, let's remove our tool, unlatch our hood, and now we're done. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Questions or comments, drop them down below. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe. Big ups to FCP Euro for working with me on this project, Mark 5 series. And hey, real quick, did you guys know that FCP Euro actually gives you a lifetime warranty on all the parts that you buy from them, which I think is really, really cool. And as far as I know, they're the only European part seller that does that, which is awesome. So hit them up, check them out. I'll drop links to them and everything else we use today down in the description. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you again next time.